Henry Stein, our protagonist in Bendy and the Ink Machine, seems invisible because no animation model of him exists in the game, making his appearance one of Bendy's greatest mysteries. But the upcoming sequel, Bendy and the Dark Revival, posted a long message letter by letter that speaks of a benevolent demon, a message that can't refer to either the cunning Ink Bendy or the brutish Beast Bendy. I believe these two mysteries have the same answer, because the benevolent demon is the ink form of Henry Stein himself. I am Blackfoot Ferret, and these are my theoretical shorts. First, let's review why there are not one, but two evil versions of Bendy. According to Thomas Connor's tapes, the first creature that emerged from the ink machine was a failed version of Bendy, and the only attempt at Bendy at the time of the recording. Joey Drew's follow-up tape recalls him seeing this first attempt walking around the studio and complaining to Thomas Connor that it might scare off investors, so the first attempt was not Joey himself. But Ink Bendy, the creature that seems to stalk and or occasionally help Henry through most of the game, shares a limp with Henry's old friend, wheelchair-ridden Joey Drew. And a picture in Sammy's area in Chapter 2 shows Bendy sporting the same maniac smile no matter what he's feeling, with the cryptic note, Don't show Joey! It seems Joey wouldn't like it if he saw this picture, and judging from Ink Bendy's vibrating, unchanging smile, which could signify anything from amusement to murderous rage, it's easy to see why Joey would hate being stuck in a form like this. But Beast Bendy doesn't have this restriction, and can freely open his mouth and form expressions. Beast Bendy also has four fingers in each hand, like Sammy, while Ink Bendy sports both a four-fingered glove and a five-fingered, more human hand. And the greatest evidence that Ink Bendy and Beast Bendy are two different creatures was found by the YouTuber Erdgez when he hacked the Chapter 5 transformation sequence, and found that rather than turning directly into Beast Bendy, Ink Bendy and Beast Bendy actually swap places behind the throne to make it seem like they're both the same creature. Beast Bendy's battle music is named Little Devil Darling, which echoes all the movie posters throughout the game that feature a single massive glove, so it seems like Giant Beast Bendy was the flawed, soulless first attempt. Blake Bendy arrived later, animated by the soul of Joey Drew. And perhaps the reason Ink Bendy helps Henry survive against the Projectionist in Chapter 4 is that Ink Bendy wants Henry to destroy Beast Bendy for him. The Pipe Shatter Rita in Chapter 5 shows an image of one Ivory Bendy flanked by two Dark Bendies that are almost impossible to see. So Beast Bendy and Ink Bendy would be the two Shadow Bendies, while the Ivory Bendy would be the Benevolent Demon we're looking for. So who is the Benevolent Demon? The one the Lost Ones worship as the one who will set them free, even as they fear Bendy will get them? Allison Angel believes this is Henry, and she isn't the only one who sees Bendy when she looks at Henry's face. In Chapter 4, defenseless Henry walks through an entire colony of Lost Ones who don't attack, but stare at him as if pleading for help. When Sammy Lawrence first prepares to sacrifice Henry to the version of Bendy he worships, he's confused for a moment at the sight of Henry's face, but shakes it off to get on with the ritual, a ritual that ends with one of the Dark Bendys devouring Sammy instead. After this betrayal by Bendy, Sammy attacks Henry, the very person he tried to sacrifice, claiming that Henry was the one who betrayed him. You lied to me! You said I'd be free! Sammy yells as he prepares to strike down Henry, vowing to cut that smile right off his face. And it's only after this loud declaration that Henry is a false savior that the Lost Ones join the searchers to attack Henry and his friends. Alice and Angel sees Bendy when she looks at Henry, which is why she believes he's the one that will set them free. Tom Boris sees Bendy when he looks at Henry, which is why he thinks Henry is dangerous. And Sammy sees Bendy when he looks at Henry, which is why he tried to get revenge on him. But when the evil physical Alice sees Henry in Chapter 3, she knows it's Henry right away, only revealing this knowledge in the elevator drop. Yet Henry never told her his name, and since he's now a responding ink creature, he doesn't look anything like his human form. But in spite of this, physical Alice was still able to correctly guess Henry's true identity by sight. How? From Thomas Connor's logs, the ink machine itself determines what characters should emerge, but there's a pattern to how it operates. Each of the employees at Joy Drew Studios takes on the form of the character they were closest to. Susie Campbell and Allison Pendle, the two voice actresses of Alice Angel, each became their own version of Alice. Thomas Connor, the tech from the Gent Corporation who designed the ink machine, plays a tech support role in the company as Boris, along with many others. Norman Polk, the projectionist, turned into a creature with a projector for a head. And Joey Drew, the corrupt head of the studio who axed Henry's original heart-shaped mouth design for Bendy to use his creepy segmented smile instead, became a version of Bendy with only that smile for a face. So it makes sense that Henry, the original creator of Bendy, would become the least corrupted version of that character. Whenever Henry dies, he respawns in an ivory Bendy statue, like the very ones the Lost Ones are worshipping and believe would set them free. 
And this is why Alice and Angel believes that Henry is the one who will save them all, despite her companion Tom's insistence that Henry is dangerous. She tells the confused Henry at the end that everything happens for a reason, and it's time for him to set them free. Sammy, Physical Alice, Alice and Angel, The Lost Ones, and Tom all see Bendy whenever they look at Henry. And Ink Bendy slash Joey Drew even does a favor for his old friend by taking out the projectionist. Ink Bendy doesn't actually attack Henry in Chapter 1 anyways, putting on a show to scare him right where Joey wants him to go. Perhaps the hunting in Chapters 2 and 3 was more playful sport than anything else. While it may have taken time for Henry's form to change into Bendy's after stepping into the magic circle, creating some early confusion with Sammy, by the end of the game it's very clear that Henry is a version of Bendy. And when Henry plays the end for Beast Bendy, it's also the end for Henry himself, forcing the movie he's trapped in to restart from the beginning. The Bendy series tells an amazing story, and we've only caught a glimpse of it so far, and there are many secrets left to be found in the main game. For example, did you know you can knock the pool balls off the table in Chapter 2 and roll them around the main areas of the game? Fallen bits of wood even seem to make an obstacle course for them. One of the balls even looks like an eyeball. There's definitely an unfound secret here. And then there's the mysterious Dr. Hackenbush who was teased in the notes in Joey's house, as well as the appointment schedule in the administration lobby. Perhaps we'll learn more about him in the sequel. Those are my theories for today, folks. Tune in next week when I play FNAF VR to see if I get scared out of my pants.